Hello and welcome to another episode of the Citizens of Lorcana podcast, a podcast where we invite you to be a part of their world. We're your host, Jared and James, and today we're talking about organized play at a higher level. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to another week. I'm excited because this week we will have our very first guest, Mark Wooden. Now, last pod, we talked about our weekly organized play and try to decrease the fear of the unknown and the fear of being judged that comes with going for your first time. Uh, This week, we're going to talk about a higher level of competition, higher level of competitive play with our highly qualified guest, Mark Wooden. Just to introduce our guest, Mark was runner-up of Kaijudo Master Challenge, New Holland, finalist in the Kaijudo Master Commentator Challenge, finished ninth place at the 2013 Kaijudo Winter Championship, winner of the Monroeville KMC Top 8 at the Akron and Columbus KMCs. Now, I always appreciate when you send me messages showing how well you've done at One Piece. Now, Mark, did I miss anything here? Uh, Well, I mean, first of all, hello, everybody. (laughs) Yes, welcome. (laughs) Um, Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, pretty cool to be on here. I really appreciate you having me on um you know the first uh like i said podcast i've been on that's actually been aired so that's cool <laughs> um but yeah no, in terms of I, I guess missing anything i mean i i was definitely involved a lot with kaijudo um you know there was a lot of uh, probably the, the biggest thing the final championship that we had uh in rhode island uh that one <laughs> it was pretty pretty intense but uh i ended up finishing second at that and um that was actually like the last event for Kajito, which was, you know, again, uh, sad, but yeah. So there, there was that. <laughs> awesome to go out on a high note for sure. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. But first, before we get into the interview, uh, a bit of news dropped this week and we're going to talk about it with Mark. And uh, so let's get right into it. The first thing is, is that uh, IGN re- released an article, and then a bunch of other stuff showed up on the Lorcana official website. And the first thing is, is we have products. And the first thing of the products we're going to talk about is starter decks. Uh, the decks are going to be three different decks, two colors each. So all six colors are represented. Uh, the, the deck will include 60 cards, including two foils of the characters on the package front, um, 11 game tokens, one rule book, and as a bonus, one actual sealed booster pack containing 12 randomized cards. Uh, this, uh, from everything we've seen, is actually a pretty cool starter deck because of the booster being included. I know some others do that, but I thought, you know, right off the bat, this is a pretty cool thing that they're doing. Uh, what do you guys think of, first of all, the characters and the setup that they're doing? Um, well, you know, I, I really do like the fact that they included, like, the, the three decks here. Um, I'm a little... I'm a little um, uncertain, you know, uh, in between this, you know, with some of the character pairings, um, you know, I, I really, I, I love, I love the design on the, uh, the Aladdin. Um, Aladdin was like one of my favorite movies as a kid. So, um, but like, I mean, he looks <laughs> pretty bad a, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, no, I, I really like that. I, I don't get the combination of like, okay, let's, let's throw an Aladdin and Cruel de Vil. I, I'm like, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's not my thing, but um, I do like the the color combinations. If I was just going off of that, you know, like the, uh, you know, Amethyst Amber deck with, uh, uh, you know, Moana and uh, Sorcerer Supreme Mickey is pretty cool. Yeah. Having them with the two different colors, so everything's represented and kind of giving you that introduction. That's basically what starter decks are for, is for people to who sure. don't the game is to introduce them to the gameplay and the aspect of the game of the two colors. So having them each have their own two color set to like kind of here's kind of what we think are the best pairings or at least the best introductory pairings. Well, and the other thing that I thought was interesting, there was a lot of speculation going into it, how many starter decks there would be. Uh, I remember thinking there would be three of two colors. So I'm just yeah, you humble brag it. here. <laughs> but the other thing that was interesting is that there's 60 cards in each starter deck. And that was another thing that we had questions about. Now, we don't know what the resource management system is going to be like, but we know that each deck will be at least 60 cards. 
Yeah, I'm a I'm a little actually surprised about the 60 card deck thing. I mean, obviously, I mean, if you play Magic, it's nothing new, nothing unexpected there. But um, I've been playing a lot of other games here lately that basically they sit you down either between 40 to, to 50, uh, 50 more so recently with, um, you know, cards or decks, things like that, like with Digimon or, or whatnot. But I mean, 60 seems like a lot of cards. Um, is that the, is that what they do in Pokemon right now too? I believe so. But let me ask you this because you play one piece. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the one piece has the Dawn deck. So in my world, I would think maybe it's 60 cards, but if it follows a similar thing, maybe there's 10 or 12 cards that you set off to the side as the resource, like the Dawn deck. Yeah. I mean, they definitely could have Dawn something like that. Um, but <laughs> uh, with that being said, um, I mean, that would make sense. It really would. But the, the thing is, is like, you know, I, I guess... I guess with, you know, Robinsberger or, uh, um, you know, with Disney, they've, they've been sort of playing with us a little bit here and there. And I mean, that's cool, you know, <laughs> but um, they're like, oh yeah, well, well, there's no text under here. Or there's no this over here. Um, I mean, you would think they would say something about it in description of the product or, you know, something like that. But instead they're like, oh no, it's, it's, you know, just 11 tokens or, you know, it's a, well, what do we mean? What do you mean tokens? Um, or, you know, again, they don't reference anything whatsoever about, you know, uh, specifically about the inks or the resources or, you know, I, part of me was thinking there might've been even like locations or something like that. There's nothing of that. The no, you're not layers wrong. of releases, they're just layering upon it. And that is going to allow them to just continually have something oh, yeah. to say. <laughs> For and they're going to keep dragging us along until spring, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the next product. They're the Booster Packs. And their website reads, unlike starter decks, Booster Packs contain 12 random cards from Disney Lorcana, the first chapter. Booster Packs, um, um, you use to build and customize your deck with abilities and characters beyond those found in starter decks. So... This was a cool thing that I thought is that they listed out the amount of types of rarities of cards that you'll receive in each pack. So you will receive six common cards, three uncommon, and two rare, super rare, or legendary rare cards, and one foil. But I think it's cool right out of the gate that they're including two uh, rare or higher level cards in each booster pack. I agree. Yeah. I I think that's cool. And the foil, too. I mean, a foil in every pack is really nice for collectors to to have something to chase well and the foil can be any level of rarity so in theory you could get up to three rares or hires yeah i don't know how they're gonna exactly do that i mean um i have a little bit of history playing magic and you know obviously the foil you know they usually include it i i want to say you know from my experience at least a lot of times it was like oh yeah okay it's a it's a common or an uncommon or something like that it's not out of the realm of possibility that could be something of higher rarity, but um, I, I will say this, uh, you know, coming again from, um, I, I'm trying to think if they do this with One Piece or not, it's been, <laughs> product has been really limited in One Piece, um, but uh, in terms of like Digimon, um, they started doing that as well, you know, with like two rares per booster pack, um, and I, I, I enjoy that, you know, a lot more, you know, it, I guess it doesn't necessarily feel as bad when you open a pack and it's just one rare and like oh you know or especially if you're getting a game that's like you're, you're just getting into you're just starting uh so and and theoretically if there was limited play or something like that you know again it gives you more options that are maybe a little bit more powerful to play around with my mo- my main experience is with my hero and that would include one rare and one foil the foil could be rare or higher but yeah there were packs that you draw and they were just duds but the thing that's awesome about this is with the two rares, it's going to be a lot easier to build your collection. So I'm going to have to go on to TCG player and get a lot less singles. I'm hoping that's my hope. Unless yeah. you want the foil set. <laughs> there are people in the discord talking about it. I, I, mean, know. I don't know. So, I mean, I'm, I'm tempted, uh, but we'll see, you know, how it goes when it comes out. But I'm definitely going to be tempted for sure to get a foil set. 
if it comes down to, you know, I mean, if, if product is readily available and, you know, obviously I, I hope that it is, um, you know, I would expect, you know, these prices to be, you know, you know, realistically, I mean, not, not like obscene, um, but again, it really depends on how much product gets released and, and, I'll, and I'm sure we can talk about that later, but um, I, as long as the foils are, are you know, solid, um, I, I'm definitely going to be blinging out my deck here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, the only issue though, I mean, it depends if it's relevant to the deck, like construction. Um, but if the cards bend, uh, or do the, the, you know, sort of like warpy type of thing that, you know, I've had my experience with in other games, uh, then I don't know how I feel about the foils, but we will see. So, so the next thing we have is something that uh, a lot of the other games do as well, which is a gift set, which is going to include uh, two oversized foil cards, two playable foil cards, uh, in addition to game tokens and boot and four booster packs. Uh, so it's going to have 34 game tokens, apparently. More uh, than 11. More than 11, <laughs> not divisible by 11. Yeah, that's, puzzle. <laughs> that's a puzzle to me too. <laughs> and the, the first two main characters that will be the foils uh, are going to be Mulan, Imperial Soldier, and Hades, King of Olympus, which is our second Floodborne character. Um, this is pretty cool. Now, a lot of people are kind of iffy on oversized cards. Uh, Pokemon yeah. does a lot of them. Uh, but for I'm, I'm guessing this is definitely going to uh, appeal to a certain segment of collectors and a lot of kids with the oversized foils to have laying around and, and uh, to, because they're not playable, of course. You mean I can't have the full deck and like get customized sleeves and run them? Come on. Uh, I, I mean, in a few years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I did think it was interesting and we'll talk about this in the accessory sh section, but they're coming out with something called a portfolio. And apparently the portfolio is big enough to store the oversized cards. But then it only holds like 64 playing cards, which right. seems really tiny. And I guess that's enough for a deck, but you don't carry a deck around in a, in in a, a binder. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, who, until today. Um, <laughs> no. Um, it, back in Kaijudo, we had these uh, portfolios or binders. Actually, I have one in the other room. Um, and they were obviously designed to carry regular size cards and all that kind of thing. But, you know, there was always these, uh, you know, events or uh, things where sometimes you get promos and you have to find some place to stash these promos or, or something like that if you're not going to open it up. So, you know, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll slide this in here on like sideways or something like that. So, I mean, they, they might just literally make it so that it's a regular portfolio or card binder. Um, and then there'll be like maybe like three or four pages that have like the bigger slots for like these cards and they'll probably maybe have them go in sideways or side loaders or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but all I know is my hope is that these cards are obtainable in the other sets, the Mulan and the Hades, because I don't really want to pay for the oversized cards. I don't think they will be. Ah. You're thinking they're going to be exclusive foils? I, I do, I do, because otherwise, um, I mean, yeah, I get you, yay tokens, um, but like at the same point, they want this product to sell, and in order for something to sell, there has to be something of demand, you know, something that people want. Um, so this seems like the kind of thing that will be uh, more for mass market than game stores, though. You know, to entice, yeah. be the shiny thing to entice kids to be like, oh, hey, mom, that's got Mulan on it. Buy me There's that. There's a reason it's called a gift set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for Christmas time when, when grandma's looking for something to buy the, the grandkids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy it because, you know, I'm probably going to be like, ah, oh, one of everything, please. Same. Sure. sure. But so. that doesn't mean I'm going to be happy about it. <laughs> 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 All right. That brings us to the next one, which is the Illumineers Trove. Uh, the website says that this is the ultimate treasure for both collectors and players. The Illumineers Trove includes a full art storage box, two deck boxes, which I'll be curious to see what those look like, eight booster packs, a player's guide. That's 
I think that's going to be an important one and more. The Player's Guide offers a look into the world of Lorcana. So that's, I think, going to be some of the lore, as well as a complete visual guide to all cards in Disney Lorcana. And I think that is going to be an awesome thing to have. Also included are deck building tips and game strategies. And 15 game tokens. Again, there we go. A completely <laughs> odd number of tokens to the, all the other things that I, are available. I, I swear, I, I can find a pattern here. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> no one has yet. <laughs> You know, It'll, like it will all up, make sense when it comes out. I'm sure. You'd be like, oh, no, we were just messing with you. There's like, um, you know, again, like some of these things, like the uh, the gift set, you know, you have the the two different, uh, you know, like token icon thingies or whatever. So I'm like, okay, that brings us down to 32 if we take those out. So then, okay, if this is designed to be, I know it's not a two-player starter set, but if it's designed to be divisible by two, then we've got 16 on each side. So what do we do we got 10 what i like to call the the lore counters uh on each side that gives us six other counters maybe they use those for the uh increase uh for power when we're doing you know like uh what was it like captain hook or something like that or um certain cards like oh this card gains evasion you know at this point right um, so like i i could see them doing that or I, and i'm going on a tangent here but like talk about um you know like uh elsa or something like that you know she has that exert ability um you know if the exertion is something that i assume we're probably not going to have like uh instant speeds in this game but if the exertion basically keeps the card tapped or rested or exerted um maybe they put an exertion counter in there as well that makes sense i mean again this is going to be marketed to a significant number of people who've never played TCGs sure. before and anything that they can provide to make it ease of entry, I think is something that they're going to try and do. Now, sure. this thing being the Illuminator's Trove, which is for collectors and players, this is something that I can see maybe not being necessarily really driven in mass market, but for game stores. Like, you know, that's, it's kind of like they're designing it for people who want to store and go out and play places. But again, I mean, I know it's all going to show up at Target. It's all going to show up at all the mass market. Oh, definitely, definitely and, Target. And, you know, that was will the first. Be taking, you know, kids will be taking yeah. us to school or whatnot, you know, get their deck box and go and do their, do their playing on the, on the, wherever they play these days. This, so, this box. I was just going to go back to the tokens. I don't know. This was just a thought that occurred to me earlier today. Because I was looking at Hades, you know, he has the number eight and just the hexagon, no swirly mark around it. And then his ability mm -hmm. says to shift six of the icons and you can play it on top of another one. I was just thinking, what if the uh, icons, these tokens are like the power and villainous? What if they're like the power tokens? And maybe that's the resource system. Like you start off each turn with a certain amount of tokens. I don't know. But that was just a random thought that I had today. Yeah, yeah, I um, I definitely, I can see that, given the fact it's a Robin's Burger game, you know, and and I have played my share of Villainous. Um, but I don't know, like in Villainous, you get, you start out like, okay, you start out with this much, but then every turn, you know, you move different to a different location. Right. Um, if you move to a different location and it's, some of these are better than others like oh hey i get one power cool um <laughs> you know i can do a bunch of other things but yeah, I, I don't know like i feel like you would be spending a lot more now at the same point if you can keep the cards out and theoretically the, the little pips or the the lore icons or whatever you want to call those things the snarf blasts uh, <laughs> <snarf blats, laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> Um, so you get the snarf flats and you're basically like, hey, okay, at the end of my turn, um, you know, if I, or at the beginning of my turn, if I still have these out, I gain this many from this reservoir of sorts. So it's like, okay, but the, the issue, I guess, is, okay, well, if that is how this works, we have to be able to have um, some steady influx. Every turn, you're going to get something because otherwise you're never going to be able to play the game. It would have to be much more generous than villainous, for sure. Yes, yes, for sure. 
I, I really I'm I, I really do wish it was something you know similar to you know like uh you know like the one piece with the dawn deck um I I do like sort of the uh progression with that because all these other games you know like for example I mean I play Hearthstone and um you know uh, other things like that and they give you one mana every turn which is great um but when you get two a turn it's like oh okay you mean I actually get to play my big guys um so I mean that's that would be fun that would be exciting um otherwise like I said I, I hope they if they don't do that I hope they stick with like the the kaijudo sort of mana resource system where every card can be a resource maybe that's yeah. why there's 60 cards in there and the deck size actually is only supposed to be 50 or 45 yeah well <laughs> so this this is sort of another uh went on another tangent here of this kind of stuff is you know again if the cards did count for um you know the mana or the resource a, a you know ink star flat um if that was the case then there would be no additional reason to have a larger deck now if you basically took random cards from the deck and put them face down prior into like a pile of like you know say 10 cards like a stack of 10 from your deck and we'll say that these count as your 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 ink right um that would make more sense as to okay well now i started with 60 cards now i'm at 50 and if i'm running two colors well i guess on one hand that might be unfortunate if you're like okay look these are all red now and i i can't run from my green cards um, but like i could see something like that and then like okay well you know every turn you get one of those from it now obviously if you flip over whatever color that card is is going to be that ink source or that ink you know resource um and then um one of the things i had mentioned in the discord was you know again that little symbol on the bottom you know before they even showed the little symbol on the bottom i was like okay I think there's a symbol there, you know? Um, and I was like, okay, well, this will reference, you know, if you turn it upside down, um, this will reference that it is being used as a resource, um, you know? So that's the only way to me that would make sense as to why we're going into potentially 60 cards. Uh, Cause I think 60 is actually high, honestly. Yeah. It, and a lot of people are saying that it's, you know, kind of like, the only reason to have it that high is if the resource system is in the deck itself, which a lot of people are saying now is the outdated way of doing it, which was the original way magic, you know, the way magic does it, which everyone is like, there's, there's problems with that. Right, right. So yeah, mana, <laughs> mana screw, mana flooding, you know, things like that yeah. uh, are, are never exactly, um, you know, fun. And that's why a lot of these games started steering away from that stuff. Um, you know, I had uh, played another game uh, it, all, all these games use very similar things, and you know, um, but there's a reason they do. Um, so I played a game called Our Saga for a while, uh, and again, you had a whole deck. These is stone decks, or uh, another game, Force of Will. Uh, I played for a while too. Again, you had you had like a magic stone deck, and every turn, you know, it's like you tap your leader or whatever, and like you get another stone for your resources, or you know, things like that, and. Uh, I don't know. I, I do like the continual thing where it's just like every turn I'm going to progress in the game and I'm not going to feel bad if I draw 10 mountains. <laughs> you yep. know what I'm saying? Like, yep. Yeah. And, and again, that goes back to making the game accessible and having players feel like they're playing the game instead of waiting to play the game. Right, right. So, I mean, it seems like that's going to be something that is good to, makes it feel good to play. The other thing we have is accessories. Now, this is fun stuff. This is all your collectible things that you can store and keep. And so they're going to have card sleeves, 65 per package, which will feature characters on the back like Captain Hook, Elsa, and Mickey Mouse. Um, deck boxes, which will hold up to 80 sleeved cards, uh, which will feature Captain Hook, Elsa, and Mickey Mouse. Again, same as the card sleeves, so you can theme your deck to one of the characters. Play mats, uh, which are fabric top uh, play mats with uh, basically like a desk mat or a mouse pad, essentially, uh, that lets you give you a playing area. And the characters on those will be Maleficent, Maui, and Mickey Mouse. And this is the only reference to Maui uh, that we have seen so far. We have not seen an image or anything. 
And then the portfolios we were talking about earlier, which again, as mentioned, holds 64 cards as well as eight oversized cards. And I'm thinking that uh, now this one features uh, Stitch and the Queen, which again, the mention of the Queen is probably the Snow White Queen. Yeah, for sure. So um, well, they even have an image of her in their um, images that they released in the IGN article. Right, right. Okay. So I think that there's eight oversized cards in there because if they release two in the gift set, I think they're going to release two per chapter. And for that's basically the first year's portfolio because it'll fit eight cards, four releases per year. There's your set. So that's why I think there's eight, but who knows? <laughs> anyway, that's just the, the additional stuff you can buy and, you know, basically spend all your money on like we're planning to do. <laughs> be curious to see if it's the dragon form Maleficent or the human form Maleficent, which was also just revealed. Right on. It's on the deck box, right? Or the pack. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably wager. I mean, I, I think I would, I don't know, probably would prefer the dragon form, but, Same. Um, you know, I, I think that it's going to be the other one. Uh, the reason I say that, and this is like one of the a little bit of tidbits of information I came across here that I want to share with you guys. Um, <laughs> so this is this is obviously something that, as far as I'm aware, nobody has done yet, or at least come forward about saying that they've done this. Um, and it's not like significant news or information per se, but it is interesting to sort of see and kind of look at. Um, but you know, like if you get into this, uh, like on the actual site there where they have all the product and so on and so forth, um, and then you go and you inspect sort of like all the uh, information mm -hmm. um you get to see a little bit more <laughs> you know like text and things like that I What's that? that but i haven't done that yet <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so um some of the things that were on there if i remember correctly it was like uh they had they had referenced you know like the three cards that were next to each other and they're they reference uh specifically queen grimhilda you know uh so it it's not just the queen it's it's queen grimhilda uh, you know, as like one of the images that's there, um, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, is there, is there more, is there more? So I keep looking, keep looking. Um, I, I didn't find anything where I'm like, oh man, I'm just like, they, they spoiled something and I was really hopeful, <laughs> but <laughs> hold on. Um, is that the name of the queen from Snow White and Grim Hilda? Yeah. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. 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 So like, uh, I even just like try to pull it up here just on my thing here now and just take a quick look. Um, but yeah, the very top, uh, they basically say, let me pull this up here. Uh, it says uh, decorative. Uh, it says, yeah, the decorative header uh, image shows three characters, left to right, Elsa, Mickey, Queen, Grimhilda, and a logo that says the first chapter. Below this is a badge stating coming to tabletop fall 2023. And yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, what's cool about this is that they go through and they actually like kind of <laughs> like tell each other, you know, like what should be there. So they're like, oh, hey, yeah, art people uh, take care of this or, you know, <laughs> add this or do this. Um, and I, I thought it was cool. Um, you know, one of these days, you know, I'm, you know, if I, I didn't say anything about it, um, I'm sure more people look into it now, but like, you know, like one of these days they could put information there and it's like, oh, hey, by the way, did you guys check this out? Um, one of the, one of the fun things that was, you know, unrelated to anything official here was just, um, how obsessed Ravensburger is with food. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, even in their name, obviously Ravensburger, right? Um, but I was going through it like different, like, you know, like sub menu items and things like that. And I'm looking, it's like, okay, this says, uh, it, instead of like a, a pack or something like that, now they, they refer to it as a wrapper. Um, there was, uh, again, a section that was a, a menu bar, uh, then there was a container and literally the icon, the very top there, uh, that is like two lines, uh, when you go to right next to the product, uh, they call that the hamburger. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they're obsessed with food. Uh, and I thought that was kind of funny. So that is funny. They did make, uh, the great British Bake Off game. So. <laughs> I think we all know where that's going. <laughs> so I think that's a nice segue into talking about the new characters. And there's maybe not a lot to say, but it's cool. The ones that have been revealed. Uh, so Simba is on Steel Ink. 
Moana is on amber or yellow. Aladdin is dreamborn. Absolutely. As I've been watching videos of people talking about the release, it's so funny to see people like, I don't know who this guy is, or somebody is like, I think that's the knight from Sleeping Beauty. I can't remember his name. I'm like, that's Aladdin, and he's totally dreamborn. He's a ruby. He's very dreamy. He's very dreamy. <laughs> Princess Aurora, which I think is awesome. She's Sapphire Inc. A human form Maleficent. She's also Sapphire. Hades is a Floodborne card, Amber Inc. And Mulan is a Ruby Inc. And like James said, there's also Maui, but we we don't know. We just know that there's a playmat of him. So it's safe to assume there's probably going to be a card of him. Yeah. And we're also yeah, receiving, definitely... you know, multiple characters in some of the uh some of the movies now um you know with uh who is it uh, moana and, oh. and maui and you know maleficent and aurora so it's leading us to believe that we're going to get a limited number of franchises in the first chapter they're not going to just like put any random character in. we've got elsa and olaf stitch and jumba so it leads us to believe they're going to be doing at least two characters for every franchise, limiting the amount of franchises per per chapter and uh, kind of expanding out the characters in each chapter, but then revisiting as they go forward with different franchises and maybe expanding on, let's say, the Aladdin movie. They're going to add three characters, let's say, and then in the next one, they'll add two more characters so that they can, can just continue. And of course, with the whole Storyborn, Dreamboard, Floodborn, they can keep it up for forever <laughs> yeah definitely i mean it, literally i mean the sky's the limit here um but yeah i the only thing with that sort of like i i guess ideology there that um i i personally you know don't fully you know think that that's going to happen there um is just because again we had the the other stitch you know like uh well i mean like the, what i'm saying is there's another stitch in the set the, yeah, there's right, absolutely there has to be. another stitch um, we're gonna because get again, more, and the Hades has uh, has shift yeah. well, which means we're gonna get more than one Hades. Because why would you right. have that? Uh, right. I mean, it has to be at different costs as well. Because why would they? Why would you want to play? You know, the same mm -hmm. card over and over again if it does the same thing. You just need the one out. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you want yeah. five stitches. Out I think whatever it's allowed. Yeah, I think the the main reason for that is to sort of like um, you know turbo yourself out a little bit and be like, okay, well. I want to get this out faster so i get it for a discount um now obviously too we start talking about you know ink costs and things like that or you know resources um you know perhaps two is a significant number you know because if it wasn't then like why would i pay this just to put him on top of this you know uh or on top of another version of himself um but yeah, I, I don't know. I definitely think we're going to get, uh, I I do think we're going to obviously, you know, get limited franchises in the first set because it is the first chapter, right? Um, you know, you can't tell the whole story in the first chapter, you know. Um, the interesting thing, uh, now that I'm sort of thinking about it, is what if, you know, this first book, uh, you know, for basically, you know, this first block book, whatever you want to call it, um, what if it is based around these specific franchises and, you know, they tell the story throughout this time frame? Now, obviously, there's going to be maybe like special sets or things like that. And, uh, you know, they'll they'll have things like that throughout the release. Um, I don't know. I, I definitely don't want them to limit themselves, but, you know, they, they have to have a plan. You know, they have to have a, a desired goal, a, lo a destination. Well, and in the articles where they first talked about Lorcan, and that's what they said is that they have a multi-year plan and they have, I remember seeing this, maybe I just am misremembering, but it seems like they have three or four sets in advance already like roadmapped. I mean, they have to, right? For sure. So, I mean, I maybe I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I did a little bit of time with, um, know like the r d people from uh actually this game uh you know ryan and steve and 
basically uh, that was back in my Kaijudo days, by the way, not, not, not so much more, you know, like recently, but in my Kaijudo days, we did that. And at the time we basically got to see, um, it was at least, let me see, because we, we did that in January and then it was basically, we saw sets or information that was coming out basically six to eight months in the future. So they're at least that far in advance. Um, basically once a set, like they just did, you know, they're like, oh, we, we proof this, it's good to go, it's ready, we have all this stuff. Um, they have almost completed the next set for sure. They're on their way probably onto the, the following set. Right. Yeah, because if they, they proved, they said they proofed at the end of December, like right before they went on holiday. I also believe though, for this game, because they said they put at least like four years of, of preparation into yeah, like this. Three, so they, three years, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like three years or so. Um, if that's the case, then perhaps they have even more ready. So right. they want to make sure that they're they're set and established and then they can sort of, you know, ease off a little bit as time goes on. Because I mean, one of the things that I've been seeing is that as they go forward, whereas in the first bit they have this like let's say they the each of the first four sets adds up to 700 cards they have to play test 700 cards but then as they go forward that number just keeps getting higher and higher and they have to play test all the cards to look for any problems and bugs and mm -hmm. anything so as it goes forward the play testing you would assume would take longer because you have more to play test so that aspect of the game has to, uh, the of the early part of the game has to take more time, whereas now they have all the distribution and and the marketing and all of that side of it all flowing normally. So I mean, you would think they have a lot of it ready to go. So yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so I don't know. Just the whole concept of um, you know people preparing for that kind of stuff. You know, back in again. You know, Kaijudo references here. Um, they had this thing called uh, the Future Future League, uh, which was essentially um, they had different decks that they tested uh, for Kaijudo. And they're like, okay, this is essentially what we feel is one of the best decks, or you know, some of the best decks in the existence from our perspective. Um, and they would essentially go and, and test these and test these and test these. Um, an interesting thing is. Uh, the very last championship uh, that we attended, uh, we had a, a really long, really, really cool discussion, um, you know, with one of the guys there uh, who was in R&D. And he, it was, it was seriously, it was like, we, we might as well have been sitting around a fire, like, you know, doing a storytelling type of thing. And um, But the, the guy was telling us about all the future and all the plans they had for d designing the worlds and and for the future stories. It, it was it was pretty, pretty sweet there. But, um, you know, with that being said, he also informed us that they were concerned about certain things and like, okay, we actually thought we might have to step in and maybe ban something. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay. And, and one of the cards they were talking about banning was a deck or a card in my deck that I use very frequently. Um, it basically gave you the option or potential to have like an, an infinite uh, source of life. Uh, you know, basically, if one of your other creatures died, uh, you would regain uh, like a life. Um, and in Kaijudo, if you lost a life, that card either, um, you know, went to your hand or it flipped over and you can, you know, activate a card for free. So every time this is happening, you're getting more resources or more effects and it just gets to be nutty. Um, but they were like, okay, this, this is one of the decks we're concerned about. But one of the other decks we were concerned about, or not concerned about, but we found that this balanced it out. So we weren't so concerned about this because we've seen these decks, we've played these decks, we knew kind of what to expect. And ironically, that was the deck or essentially the decks that played in the finals of that event. And I was like, oh, that, that was pretty sweet. You know, like that they, they had tested this so much and like, okay, we've, we basically, we've seen you know how things progress and and basically you guys brought us to life that's pretty cool. that's pretty incredible all right so the final thing we're going to get to before we talk with mark more uh which basically <laughs> this whole thing's been like an interview which has been awesome <laughs> as we go through the products it's been so cool um is actually uh we actually know some prices 
but not in America, only in Europe. Uh, the German uh, language version of the Ravensburger site actually had a press release that is not on the English version, and it includes prices for the products uh, in euros, uh, which the starter deck is 1999. Uh, the booster pack is 599. The gift set is 2999, and the Illuminers Trove is 5499. Now this is all again in euros, and in mm. euro in Europe they have uh, VAT tax, which is included in the price. Uh, so these are would be the after tax prices. So the prices will be a little higher, which a lot of people are seeing that basically six dollar booster pack, and they're thinking like, what, wait a second, that's that's way too high for a booster pack. Um, so a lot of people are considering that this is going to be cheaper uh, because otherwise, if it's just straight conversion, that's like six fifty in in uh, U.S. dollars, and that's not going to fly for a booster pack. So. <laughs> You have to also look at other things that Ravensburger sells in Europe and in America, like their games. And those games where one may be $50 in Europe, it is $30 or $35 here. So they do have different prices, not based on the conversion rate for their items. So uh, I think we're expecting that price is actually to be lower than yeah. this. It's not yeah. going to be a straight conversion. It will definitely be lower, but... As I've been listening to the chatter of people on Twitter, I, for example, one person was saying that a booster pack of flesh and blood cost 349 euros. So to think that a pack of Lorcana is going to be almost double that for them, a pack of flesh and blood here, what, maybe three, four dollars? I don't know. I don't play it. Well, how many cards in the pack, though? That's the other thing. I think there's 10. Well, I, okay, I I don't really know a whole lot in terms of flesh and blood. Yeah, um, same here. But I'm I'm basically I've been on the Bandai train for a while. You know, I played um, you know Dragon Ball Super, Digimon, uh, and then they've got like a couple other games coming out too. Um, obviously, One Piece. Uh, but um, originally, before before COVID, before you know all the uh, issues with transportation and and shipping and all this other stuff. Um, you know, things were typically right around that $3.99 price range. You know, you could kind of come to expect, okay, $4 booster pack. Um, and then some places started increasing that. Like if you go to the MSRP of these things now, it's like, it's, it's even more. Um, and some of my stores I've been to, it's like, you know, if you want to buy a pack, hey, look, this is like, you know, uh, five bucks. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm still living back in like the nineties where, you know, everything was <laughs> you know, so cheap, yes. you know, I'm like, Oh, okay. What, what, it's like 12 bucks to buy a 24 pack of pop. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, this is actually looking like it's going to be pretty standard. It might have, as people call it, the Disney tax where instead of four or four fifty, it's $5 a booster. But I mean, I don't think it's going to be outlandishly, overpriced compared to the other products on the market when we were no, talking it's... james you and i were talking about how we read an article today by someone who worked at a hobby a local game store and he was saying when he worked there that the amount of profit that a game store made off of a magic booster set was 35 cents so if the prices are a little bit higher and the local game stores get a little bit more of that i'm okay with that too that was a that was a few years ago though, not in the current market. I think they've definitely increased it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it depends on you know distributors and and so on and so forth. I mean, typically speaking, from what I've seen on distributor prices, um, I, I have some you know people I I know that you know own shops, etc. Um, you know, I mean, they're they're making money off of each box sold. Um, it just depends on how much they want to make, you know, right. Um, typically at least again, Bandai games, you know, you're probably making, uh, you know, what 15, 20 bucks, maybe on a box. Um, unless of course you sell it at a higher rate, if you pick it up at a lower rate, obviously then you can make more off of it, but, um, you know, and then you have some of the companies or I'm sorry, some of the uh, stores that, you know, want to, um, you know, more so, more or less, you know, sort of reward their patrons. Like, look, you know, we're going to give this to you um, at, you know, a, a decent rate, you know, like we're not going to gouge the prices for you. And, um, you know, speaking of, of which, you know, like one piece boxes right now, they're ridiculous. Um, 
I, uh, <laughs> I, I, okay. So there was like, I picked one up and it was like 80 something, uh, you know, they, they gave me a, a pretty decent deal on it. Um, and I was like, oh man, $80 or 80 some dollars. I'm like, oh man. Um, because back in the day before all this stuff happened, I was picking up boxes of Bandai products, you know, for like 60, $65. Um, and I was like, you know, that, that's nice. And now it's like, okay, it's like, you know, 85, $90. Well, now they're sitting about like 230, $250 for a box of one piece. Um, <laughs> that's insane. That's, I cannot that's... believe that. And that's your, your whole uh, market of supply and demand going right there. That's that, my that, biggest that's... question mark about Lorcana when it comes out is the supply. I mean, I think the game's going to be amazing. I think the community is going to be awesome. But I am worried to all get out about how supply is going to be handled. Because the Disney collectors are going to want it. The card game collectors are going to want it. And the players are going to want it. Yeah. If this wasn't... Okay, so if this wasn't a Disney related game, um, you know, I, I definitely don't think it would be, you know, like a huge deal. Um, but after seeing how, you know, after the D23, you know, expo and everything like that went, uh, where, you know, I was like, oh man, $300 for a whole set of these cards? Oh man, no, thank you. And now they're like <laughs> thousands of dollars. Yes, I remember that. Um, oh, oh man. You want to talk about that FOMO, right? seriously i for this game I, I do have some concerns but i i don't know i mean again they they ran out of like those mickey promos really quick but i like to think that they're doing some kind of like mental math in the background they're like okay you know we sold this many now we know let's yeah. try it again day two let's see how many we sell so they they probably have some kind of like weird growth slash flow chart in the back of their you know Ravensburger offices. They're like, okay, we hit this number. Now we have to produce ten times this amount. Um, I, I'm I'm hopeful that they they have that stuff together. Um, you know, I mean, definitely when it comes to the games and you know in in general for Ravensburger, like, I mean, I go to my Target and there's always product there. You know, and I know it's different, uh, but it's nice to know it's like oh if i want to get this it's there now yeah. simultaneously um there have been times where i go there and hey look at this there's a target exclusive you know um i go online now like okay i can still get the original or the the regular version of this it was like a cruel deville one you know uh but their target exclusive had the one with like the the spots and everything like that on the box and a different icon for cruella or something like that and uh yeah, I mean, now the thing's going for like, you know, $70, $80, you know, as opposed to an expansion pack that's like, you know, $20, $25. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I definitely think if that can happen in one of their other games, it's definitely going to happen in this game, um, especially with just the way the world's been. You know, like I'll go to the store and be looking for certain cards, like One Piece, and nothing. You know, you, you kind of have to <laughs> do some hunting, you know. Yeah, which is the hope is that we don't have to hunt it too much to be able to collect it and play it when it's out. I mean, obviously, initially, there's going to be that rush. And sure. then hopefully it evens out as they get product, keep pushing product out where they've hopefully printed enough to just keep pushing it out as more and more orders come in. Prices are going to be crazy at the beginning, like on the secondary yeah. market. Reorder everybody pre yes. from your local get comfy cozy store. with your local distributor not your distributors <laughs> but like you know with your, your game stores and stuff like that yep. talk to them get them to get this game if they haven't already uh you know in terms of like getting it on the radar because it's it's definitely going to sell so get what you can um within reason be considerate for everybody else people <laughs> <laughs> all righty so Again, we want to express our appreciation to you, Mark, for coming on. That was awesome, wasn't it? It was It was very cool, yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so let's finish things up. Uh, let's talk about the summary of the news. We talked a lot about it already, but one piece, a couple things that we missed. One that kind of got lost in the shuffle was the drop of Jumba Jukaba. Happened on a Friday. And this one took me by surprise because I had messaged the... Disney Lorcana socials. I was like, any news today? And they're like, nope. 
Friday's a bad day, Treeville News. And then they, boom, like an hour later, drop Jumba Jukaba. <laughs> and they're like, card reveals are not news, people. <laughs> <laughs> so Noted. Jumba is Noted. a character from Lilo and Stitch. He's the mad scientist that created Stitch. Just a vanilla character, five cost, four attack, five defense. We think that there's probably two of those lore icons on there, but we're not 100% sure because of that pesky Ravensburger triangle. But we do see a little uh, edge sticking out. A few pixels there. Yeah. And then the other thing that uh, happened in the IGN article is that they announced that Ravensburger will be premiering Lorcana at Gen Con in Indianapolis, correct? I'm so excited. Yes. August yes. 3rd, 3rd through the 6th. Yes. And what they said is they will have uh, select products available. They will have, uh, they said they're going to allocate each day. So they will have product available every day. Um, who knows what else they may have, but they're going to have the actual product they revealed in the IGN article. They'll have some of those products. So probably like starter decks and boosters, maybe some gift sets. Who knows? Um, I'm kind of thinking the one product that won't be available are boosters. Like I can see all the rest of the products being there. I don't know. That's just my theory. I, I agree with you. I, I think that, you know, they, they want to get stuff out there, but you know, like giving out straight up like boosters that early, that's going to be, mm, maybe they'll, you know, with that being said, maybe they'll just even just do like the decks and then the, uh, the troves that, that have way, the, the supplies. Yeah, yeah, because like, you know, I mean, just in general, you know, like, here's the deal, like, if I could buy all of these, you know, um, you know, different box sets and stuff, I could just buy a ton of them, and then I have enough to basically make decks already. Yep. But, uh, and then that puts people ahead. But it also does, again, the really nasty things to the secondary market. Um, yep. Whereas if it's just the decks, okay, you get one pack. Now, with that being said, you, you know, if you pull something really good in that pack and you put it on TCG player or whatever, it's going to go, you know, nuts. Um, so, I mean, that is a thing, but like what Mario <laughs> from Mario's gaming world was saying before, it's like, you know, don't buy the pre-sales. Um, <laughs> seriously, um, save yourself some money. Just be patient like a week or two. Well, and, and the, the game releases at the local game stores on August 18th. So it's just right. maybe two weeks later. Two weeks and then, later. At mass retail, think Walmart, Target. They even said they would likely sell it online, so probably Amazon on September 1st. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that, besides if you want to get it early, if it's not like a financial hit or whatever to go to Gen Con, of course, there's going to be the developing community, the chance to play it first, which a lot of people really want to do. But oh, yeah. also, they haven't announced whether or not there will or won't be something like promos. Fingers crossed. So if there's promos, they're going to do the same thing they did at D23. It's going to have a Gen Con little stamp at the bottom of it. And that thing will be something, of course, that has the collectible side of it. And of course, the whole, like, I want one of everything kind of aspect of it. You got to get one. But just keep in mind that it is expensive because you have to buy possibly planes, plane flight, hotel, badges to the convention. In some cases, eBay slash TCG player is not that horrible of a thing because you may be able to pick up if there are promos for a reasonable price compared to all that you would spend to go there. So if that is the only thing you want, maybe consider just going on to eBay and just picking one up, even though it may be, you may be kicking yourself in the foot for spending a hundred dollars or whatever on one card. Would you rather spend a thousand dollars just to get there to get that one card? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it also kind of just depends too on, on who you are as, as a person, you know, like, look, if, if you're a, a big collector, okay, I get it. But like, if you're just like, again, casual player or even a competitive player, um, if you're going to get the cards regardless, it's like, okay, well, this has a stamp on it. It's functionally the same card because, the, you know, Ryan Miller is basically saying like, Hey, you know, we're not going to print something and make it unavailable to the population. Yep. Uh, so yeah and that's uh, such a key just, thing is, is that it makes it definitely much more shifted to the collector side and doesn't hurt the players at all right right all right so now it's time for some disney jeopardy should we uh ask mark the question james yes let's do, do you want to ask Oof. him or do you want me to i've got it pulled up you go ahead and do it 
All right. Are, are you game, Mark? Uh, I will try to. <laughs> <laughs> you know the basic premise of how Jeopardy works, right? Uh, yeah, I say the, you, you give me the answer, I give you the question or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's all Disney related. So we're going to start. We're, we're doing the music category. And I'm just going to go one through 500, okay? Sure. So music for 100. What is the song in the beginning of The Lion King? Uh, the <laughs> I always joke about this one because I always like, uh, you know, it, it sounds like they're trying to say, oh, Pennsylvania, but it's not. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. Is that actually the circle of life? I'm sorry. What is the circle of life? Correct. Ding, 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 ding. You got it. I was like, oh, yeah. Final answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. From what movie is this from? Tale as old as time, true as it can be, barely even friends. What is beauty and the beast? <laughs> Easy. Correct. <laughs> okay. Here we go. In Mary Poppins, according to Mary, what word sounds quite atrocious? um hmm so i'm gonna say uh what is super califragilistic expialidocious that is correct you are three for three <laughs> <laughs> i was like halitosis I... <laughs> halitosis <laughs> okay for 400 it features more elvis songs than any movie actually starring elvis Oh, that's the answer <laughs> yes oh, okay um i'm gonna take a stab at this one uh what is lilo and stitch correct ding 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 <laughs> you Easiest are on a hundred dollar question i've ever heard i know right <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking we should i think i'm thinking i should have chosen a different section uh okay for 500 and what movie did one of its songs kickstart the music career of Christina Aguilera? I didn't know this. <laughs> um, because I don't know the answer to this, I'm going to say, what is dirty? <laughs> <laughs> what is Mulan with the song Reflection? Did you know cool. that, James? I did actually know that. Oh, nice. Uh Okay, yeah, no, I had no idea. Yeah, I actually got to see her perform that live at D23 back in, I think it was 2019. Oh, very cool. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, four or five, that is not bad, I would say. I'll, I'll take it. That's pretty good. That's, <laughs> I think that's better than us. Yeah. I've gotten a three, so. So. <laughs> so with that, we're going to wrap it up. If you liked what you heard, click like, subscribe, and you can follow me on Twitter at Citizens of Lorcana. And of course, you can subscribe to this podcast. James, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me everywhere at Dan Regal or check out geekshotphoto.com for uh, links for social media and everything for my wife and I. And Mark, where can we find you online? Uh, well, I mean, I do have a YouTube. Uh, you just type in Raijinku, which I know is, is so fun to spell. R-A-I-J-I-N-K-U. Or just type in Mark Wooden, uh, W-O-O-D-I-N. Um, and uh, you, you can probably find me that way, too. Um, but Raijinku is my handle basically for all online platforms. So uh, if you ever see that name, it, it is me because there's nobody else that <laughs> has that tag. Well, thanks again. We appreciate having you on. Yes, thank you yeah, so much. I, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, yeah, and if you guys want to do any more future collabs or anything like that, let me know. Uh, just make sure you uh, chalk out enough time. <laughs> <'cause>... <laughs> Well, today was different because we had the major news that dropped. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so all right. This will be like two or three episodes, right? Probably two. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. So, everybody, uh, have a great evening. Yes, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>